In this video, I'm going to be working out one related rates problems. Um, we'll talk about a little general strategy first and then go through the related rates problem. Um, each one of the videos that I do with re related rates are generally just one problem per video because they are kind of a long problem and it takes a while to get through them, so that'll keep the video a little bit shorter. All right, in general, my strategy for solving any related rates problem would be to first try to define your given and your fine. Write it down so you can clearly identify that from your story problem. All right, and if possible, depending on how the problem has worked, draw yourself a picture. Sometimes pictures help a little bit. Um, then the next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to relate the variables together. You're going to have to figure out what's being asked for, what are you trying to find, what are you given, and how can these variables relate together because in general it's going to probably be some formula and it's probably going to be a common geometric formula that you know, all right, because then that formula is the one that you are going to be um, having to differentiate. You're going to implicitly differentiate with respect to time because these rates are changing with respect to time. After you do that and you've simplified the equation, then you're going to plug in your known values, whatever they gave you, anything that you know, and then solve for your one unknown value, value which is whatever you are trying to find. Okay, all right. Um, so for our example for this video, all right, we're talking about air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of nine halves feet cubed per minute. Find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is two feet. Okay, so we kind of take a look at what's going on here. We've got a balloon. We've got air being pumped into that balloon, so that balloon is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it tells you it's being pumped in at a rate of nine half feet cubed per minute. All right, this label right here, if you can't just logically look at this and go, okay, air is being pumped into the balloon, okay, which what's changing, well, the volume is what's changing here, but this label right here should give you a clue as to the volume is what is changing. All right, if I attempt to uh, draw a picture on this one, I don't know that the, the picture is going to be that helpful. All right, that just kind of looks like a circle, so I don't know, it's kind of give it a three-dimensional look there okay all right and what's happening while well, this is expanding as air is being pumped into this this is expanding okay so that's what we've got going on all right and then it says find the rate of change of the radius so I'm trying to find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is exactly two feet okay so when my radius right there gets to two feet when the radius gets to two feet what is that rate of change okay because as that balloon expands and if you've ever blown up a balloon or anything then you can maybe visualize this all right initially when you start putting air into a balloon it goes starts to go really really fast but then the more air that you put into it the slower it goes that 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 rate is changing okay so let's go through our story problem here and see if we can't find our given okay so air is being pumped into the balloon at a rate of nine half cubic feet per minute all right so right there is my given all right and we said that that's the volume is what's changing so dvdt is given to me at nine cubic feet per two minutes. Okay, so there's my given. All right, now what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the rate of change of the radius there when the radius is two feet. Okay, so I'm trying to find, let's see, changing my radius here. So that would be a dr dt because it's with respect to time is equal, or um, that's what I'm just trying to find out, not equal to anything. dr dt is what I'm trying to find when r equals 2 feet. All right, and then we were talking about earlier, this is the overall volume, all right, that we're trying to do here. So hopefully you have your formula for the volume already uh, memorized. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. All right, so that is kind of something that you would have to know. You've got to have a, a pretty good basis of your geometric formulas. All right, so I'm going to take this volume formula, 
All right, so V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. All right, and then the first thing I'm going to do here is I want to implicitly differentiate this. So let's make a little note that that's what we're doing right here. There we go. Implicitly differentiating this. All right, with respect to time. So that V is going to become a dV over dt equals the 4 thirds uh, pi is just going to stay there for right now because those are just constants out in front. Now let's focus on this r to the third. That would be a 3r squared. And then with respect to time, I have to remember that chain dr dt. All right, now generally at this point, I'm going to do some simplifying and try to clean this equation up a little bit. 3 on the bottom here and 3 on the top is going to cancel out. All right, so that's going to clean my equation up a little bit here with a dv over dt is equal to a 4 pi r squared dr dt. Okay, now at this point I can go through and I can start to see what I've got and what I can plug in. I was given dv dt. The 4 and the pi's are constant. All right, when the radius is 2, I'm trying to find dr dt. Okay, so I have enough variables there that I can plug things in. So I'm going to plug my given in as 9 feet cubed over 2 minutes. All right, and then equals 4 pi. All right, now my radius is at 2 feet, so I'm going to go 2 feet squared. You want to make sure and put that label in there so that we can get our have our label right when we get all the way to the end. And then the dr dt. Okay, that's the only thing left. It's the only thing I need to solve for. So it's a matter of now being able to solve this equation for dr dt. All right, I'm not going to do anything with this over here, so we're just going to carry that down. 9 feet cubed over 2 minutes. All right, now we're going to do some simplifying here. 2 squared is 4 times this 4 out here is going to be 16, so I'm going to have a 16 pi. Now, this feet is also squared, so this is going to be feet squared. All right, and then dr dt. All right, now I'm trying to solve this equation. All right, just like any other equation, if I had like 10 equals 5r, I would divide both sides by 5. So I need to divide both sides by this. Now, hopefully you're going to be able to see that since I've got a fraction over here, if I think of this as over 1, then all I've got to do is multiply by the reciprocal, which makes it kind of easy right there. So let's come back up here so I have a little bit more room to write. So if I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal, then I'm going to have um, dr dt is equal to this 9 feet cubed over 2 minutes times the reciprocal right here, which would be 1 over 16 pi feet squared. Okay, now your labels are going to cross out really nice here at this point. All right, I've got feet squared in the bottom, and I've got feet cubed in the top. All right, so these two are going to completely go away, and I can then be just left with the 1 foot up there in the top. Okay, so let's go through, do some multiplying. I can't do any crossing out. 9, 16, 2, I can't do any simplifying there. So dr dt is going to be the 9 feet on the top. And 16 pi times 2 is going to give me a 32. So 32 pi. And then the label on the bottom is minutes. Okay, so there we have solved for dr dt when the radius was at 2 feet. Okay, and then generally I always have my students write a therefore statement just kind of summing up what the whole entire problem involved here. So we could say something like, therefore, when the radius is 2 feet, so at exactly the moment as it's expanding and that radius gets to 2 feet, the radius is changing at a rate of 9 over 32 pi feet per minute. 
Okay, so just a nice little summary statement there of actually what's going on. All right, and hopefully somebody's talked to you about related rates. All right, the, the rate at which that radius is changing is not a constant rate. All right, that, that, that's the deal with both of all of these related rates problems is you cannot just simply write a proportion. They're, these rates are changing at a, they're changing, the rate itself is changing. It either is speeding up or it's slowing down depending on whatever is happening in the story problem or in the given scenario. So just one nice little example there of a related rates problem with you know, a nice little strategy. Always try to draw some type of picture. It's going to help you visualize what's going on. Find your given. Find your find. What it's asking you to find in the story problem. Come up with the geometric formula that you're going to use. And like I said, most of these are always going to be a common one. So it might not be a bad idea to just go back and memorize and re-familiarize yourself with all those geometric formulas that you learned back in geometry. And then implicit differentiation. Make sure you're doing it with respect to time, plug in your known values, and then solve for your unknown. Definitely thanks for watching, and be sure and keep an eye out for more related rates videos. Thanks.